get a seven inch figure and exclusive comic book, like going to a convention and getting one of the exclusive comics at a convention, a comic convention, you can get them now at your local toy store and or department store. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and you know how I've been saying that the big companies may be holding stuff back for summer conventions or upcoming events? <laughs> this week, they proved me wrong. You know what that means, right? More toys to talk about. Of the moment. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So we're just jumping in. Enough of this intro business. Enough of this, oh, there's toys to talk about. After what seems like forever, when it's actually been about three, four, five, six, seven months, well, <laughs> in toy time, that's forever, right? NECA has posted updated pictures of their Dungeons and Dragons Grimsword and War Duke, and oh, oh baby. Oh, man. The first time around with the announcement and the pre orders, the images were a bit small. And, well, you could tell what you were getting, but they were kind of basic. Now, oh, Holy moly. I didn't even know what the hell a Grimsword was <laughs> until solicitations opened up. But when I saw the snake motif with the coil and the weapons and everything, it just sings a siren song. Seeing prettier pictures just makes that tune even louder in my ears. War Duke is iconic though, so it makes this figure a bit more make and break since a lot more people recognize him. I will agree with some of the comments I've seen of him being a bit wide in the waist because of the overlay, but I kind of like the more realistic proportions. Try not to read too much into the wonky knee either. I think the photographer just didn't realize that it was turned almost 90 degrees for all of these pictures. And I think they went with that style of leg with the big old kneecap overhang because of the left leg with the scale. It, it looks almost seamless. On top of that, NECA has added more accessories to each of them. Well, for Grim Sword, it's just some extra hands on top of his snake shield, his snake mace, and his not so snake sword. Warduke's first pass was a shield, a sword, and two short swords. Now it comes with sheaths for all of those blades, although I think one was shown in the original pictures. There's three right hands, two left, and a flame effect for the big sword. I don't know if these additions were originally announced. They weren't in the solicitation, but maybe NECA said something like, hey, this isn't everything stay tuned. Whether they did or didn't though, it's still nice to see a company adding stuff instead of subtracting, you know? $35 a pop, hopefully this means that release date is right around the corner because mm, 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 so good. Also from NECA, here is the packaging for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters Michelangelo as the mummy. First take baby, I'm on a roll. I just jinxed myself. Have they said they're gonna do art prints of the cover paintings? Because I would love that. They'd look great in the kitchen or the hallway just to spruce things up. Are you a Turtles fan? No? Why? <laughs> End of the day though, at least for me, packaging reveals are not the most exciting toy news out there. Unless they're used to announce the next character in the line. The one that everybody has been waiting for because he's the best turtle. It's Donatello as the Invisible Man. Ain't gonna lie to y'all, first impression, I was kinda... What? It's Donnie with his head wrapped up, goggles, trench coat, purple ascot. But me being the rational man I am, I'm gonna wait until the full reveal before I make any kind of decisions because maybe the accessories are gonna knock this out of the park. Maybe there's an alternate clear translucent head, maybe some hands in that same flavor, weapons, I don't know. They've done such a good job with all the previous figures of just merging these two properties that I have faith. I really, really do. But you know what they say about first impressions. Plus Donatello makes everything better. Maybe that's why they went with the Invisible Man because of the strength of Donatello. It's like, hey, Donatello's gonna sell this figure. Let's just put him in a trench coat. No, again, I'm looking forward to seeing the full reveal. Psst, you may not be surprised to hear this, but Robo don't know a lot about Doom. So McFarlane announcing new figures in this line, I, I just kind of scratch my head and go, is that Halo? That's gotta be Halo. Ooh, easy, easy. The Ember and Astro Slayer share the same body in different colors, and well, uh, that one's head's on fire, in case you didn't notice. The classic Doom Guy skin is much more interesting to me because it looks classic. And I don't say that because classic's in the name. It just has that old school simplicity to it, along with brighter colors. It, fun. 
it looks a lot more fun. I've seen the discussions of why Todd isn't making monsters in this line because as we always say that would be right up his alley but this is standard McFarlane operating procedure. Some reuse happening, gear up for new tooling, and see how sales do. As he's proven in the past, if you buy them, he will make more. If not, he'll just leave it by the wayside. You know what I'm talking about, right, Game of Thrones? Eh? Harry Potter? He makes more of what's selling. That's really the basis of a company, of a business, to make money. And if it's not making money, if you want these, they're $20 a piece. Ember is a general release. Astro is a big bad toy store exclusive. And then Classic Doom Guy is only available on the McFarlane Toys Shop. Link is in the description. Sticking with McFarlane, but shifting over to DC, a few weeks ago, they announced the DC Direct Page Punchers, which turned out to be three inch figures with very, very limited articulation. And this right here, this is whoosh. We don't talk about anything below six inch. Mostly because I can barely keep up with the news of six inch and compatible lines, you know? So when I heard the term page punchers again this week, I didn't pay it no mind until pictures started scrolling across my socials. And I thought, wait a second. No, 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 that's DC Multiverse. You can't fool me, Todd. But that's what it is. DC Multiverse figures under the DC Direct brand. Same seven inch scale, same articulation scheme. I was gonna say different distribution since it's DC Direct and those were always specialty market, but it looks like these are going everywhere that Multiverse goes. Essentially, this is his way of sneaking more figures out to you. No particular order, let's start with Superman. Is there some kind of WB memo floating around that demands that every Superman must look like a miserable bastard? I mean, this is okay. It looks like the art I've seen, but someday we will get that bright red and baby blue, smiling, hopeful, facial expression Superman that we've been wanting for years now. Save all that grim and grittiness for Batman, who has it in spades here, almost to a hilarious degree. <sighs> Who had a burrito? Same thing here though, I think a lot of us are waiting for that clean classic look, but I'll admit, I do like the look of this costume. The padding, the seam lines, the design, but is it supposed to be green? It's almost like a Lego wilderness survival suit. My wife already laid down the law and said that we are getting Constantine because it looks great and it's her favorite DC character. I was about to say it's hard to mess up a dude in suit and trench coat, but we've seen it happen several times before. Finally, there's Black Adam himself and holy shit, if he was any wider, this would be a deluxe figure. I know, I know, you take off that armor, it's probably the same size as the rest of the figures, but man, the shoulder armor and the way it integrates with the rest of the pieces on the body, it, it's a good looking figure. <laughs> $25 a piece, maybe because they come with an exclusive comic book, or maybe it's the extra plastic used here. Seriously, it's like Hasbro did away with most of the plastic in their packaging. Todd was like, bring it over here, it makes mine look more sexy. Or maybe it's the DC Direct Upcharge, because I think the DC Essentials, the new ones under Todd, are running $30. So who knows, maybe it's just more expensive because of the logo. These though, do out in July. Diamond Select caught my eye this week with a new Red Hulk. Yeah, we've had a few over the years, but this one is based on their Immortal Hulk body, which I've heard nothing but good things about. Not enough for me to grab one, but that's mostly because I have a few Hulks at this point. Red Hulk, on the other hand, I have, do I have just one? And it's probably needing some upgrading because I like the look of this, the proportions, the shading on the red, the facial expressions, the way the eyes just look like they're burning out at you. I'm down, but then of course, every time we see something, it's like, but could it be more? People started posting pictures of the Robert Maverick Red Hulk. And I thought that would have been an amazing alternate head with the mustache and the aviators. And now I want that. How do I get that? For this though, $28 due out in November. Remember the devastatingly classic Spider-Man that Mezco showed a few months ago and said, oh, well, this is in the future. Well, guess what? It's the future. It's here now. That crazy thing went up for pre-order this week and it looks like some of the pictures were ripped right out of the comics, like Ditko art brought to life. Need I say more? <laughs> Go get it. I still can't help side-eyeing the wrist choice though. I, I kind of get it because of the swappable hands, but I will admit that with the glove top coming up to here, it's less jarring from cloth to plastic because our eyes see a glove top. Then the web lines break when you turn it and the design seems slightly different from here to here. Also the web wings that I feel are integral to what they were going for here, 
those are missing, which isn't a huge deal, but once it was pointed out, I thought, <clears throat> once your eyes adjust to that nitpickiness, it's just pure Spider-Man goodness. Well, okay, another gripe, which is easy to do because of all this goodness. All of that is staring you in the face. First impression, oh, wow. But then <laughs> those start to seep out. My other gripe is I wish it came with another unmasked Peter Parker head without the glasses. That would be even more gravy on a very nice bed of biscuits. Especially for shots like this, where it looks like Dog Hawk has just removed Peter's mask, but somehow he was wearing his glasses under there, even though it's skin tight. But the two Parker heads we do get are spectacular, along with three masked heads. One head with the light up features probably wasn't necessary, but they're swinging for the fences here. Tons of hand and web options, Spidey Sense, camera, tracers, and a very appropriate base. $120, again, light up feature, and deluxe in the name usually means higher price point scheduled for early next year. Speaking of Spider-Man, the Hasbro Marvel team had a nice legend showing on Wednesday. Nothing too over the top, just a slight whistle wetter between live streams, but they tried to hit all the different beats for different collectors, like Japanese Spider-Man. If you missed out on the Bandai release, then they got you covered. Makes me wonder if we'll see this as Nicholas Hammond Spider-Man at some point. And no, I don't look at the leak list. And even if I did, I wouldn't be able to remember them. But it seems like they'd want to get reuse out of those arms and legs. But, well, the proportions, the body overall would work for that. Also on the Peter Parker front, a Target exclusive bombastic Bagman was announced. You know, the temporary costume he used one time to cross town after losing his costume that just embedded itself in our hearts and minds. Well, okay. Judging by comments, maybe not everyone's hearts and minds, but this is cool for a Target exclusive. It's a fun look, plus the kick me sign that plugs into the back hole on any figure that has a back hole. <laughs> Did I make it sound dirty? Again, fun factor. Then they added to the Disney Plus What If Infinity Ultron wave with Sharon Carter. Am I the last person to realize she's wearing villain colors too? <laughs> like, I watched the show as it came out and didn't catch that. Next was Fantastic Four Retro Carded Fire Lord, and this will look fantastic next to the upcoming Galactus. Plus, I just love classic characters. Yeah, I try to stick with the Children of the X, but there's also that 70s, 80s time that is near and dear. Like Tigra, it could probably be a little less Heathcliff, a little more Garfield, but in Fire Lord's case, with the fire, I'm okay with it leaning towards Flaming Hot Cheeto. Then the big daddy of reveals when it comes to my personal hopes and dreams, the Mojo World box set. I talked about this the most in my rundown after the live stream, but I'm gonna ramble about it some more, starting with Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Spiral would have been amazing here, even if they had to drop Dazzler, but I needed this look for Allison to go in my dream Outback team, so I'm good. Plus, I understand the logistics, the budget, everything. Her being reused made way for the new sculpts in the box, even with the higher prices. But they gave her double elbows, so that works out. X-Baby Wolverine, I, after my initial, oh my god, look at the Mojo World set. I could probably take it or leave it. I guess I'm taking it because I pre-ordered the set, but you know what I mean. Thanks to everyone who pointed out that this is a match for Scotty Young's art, looking disturbingly close to the Gentle Giant statue, but in a pinch, you could use this in an Exiles display. And by you, I mean me, because that's most likely where I'm gonna put it. For long shots, some people thought I was joking, but I am dead serious. I was having a conversation about needing a new long shot less than 24 hours before the live stream. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. We all needed a new long shot. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. All of us, everyone. This looks so much better than the Toy Biz version that I have, I have no clue where mine went. And unbelievably, I have seen comments saying, why did they give him a mullet? What the hell? Besides missing a finger on each hand, he's just wearing a black jumpsuit with a star on it. Why would anyone want to take the mullet away from him? He's business in the front, party in the back, party all the time. Longshot wants to party all the time. For Mojo, he's larger. And that right there was my biggest problem with the original. I don't remember my reaction when I put that together back in the day, but I feel like it was, well, this is small. And then over the years, Marvel Legends has kind of creeped up in size. So it got smaller and smaller. I was worried about the tentacles holding up the big bulky body, but after seeing more renders, 
it looks like they put clear stubs, risers, on the bottom of it. You can see them better there in the reflection underneath. That works for me. But what's the light switch on the very front right here, Mojo? You sly dog, you. Pulse exclusive, $132. <laughs> Which meant I had to skip a few other things. Budget. You gotta stick to the budget. To finish off the stream, there was a tease of a hand holding a rectangle and they talked about Gambit too much. Let's just get that out of the way. So I feel like that was a swerve. The thought of that being a playing card, that just embedded itself in my brain. So all I could think of was Bullseye. Then I remembered we have a fairly nice Bullseye already. I like the suggestions that it could be MCU Jimmy Woo from Ant-Man and WandaVision. He was learning to do the card trick. Then other comments said, it could be animated series morph. If you Google X-Men animated series morph, one of the first pictures is him sitting on a couch with a remote. I feel like the fingers should be choked up on it a little bit more, but I guess it could be. I guess we'll find out one way or another fairly soon because as I was walking in here, Pulse posted a picture of the packaging of the X-Men animated series morph. So could be this, could be something else. I, I, like I said, I'm leaning towards the Jimmy Woo figure. Still though, morph. When you're ready. I'll be there for you. I'm guessing they'll show the figure fairly soon. And let's finish off the weekly with some Victory Royale news. Seems like Instagram is the hip new place for Hasbro to hang because not only did they do the Marvel live stream there, they also did a vote where we can pick the next Fortnite figure. The choices were Ghoul Trooper, Leviathan, and Black Knight. Yes, all three characters that were done in the Jazzwares line. And up to this point, Hasbro's been pretty good about avoiding that kind of thing. And if they did, it would be a different color scheme, a different deco. It would have been more exciting to get something different, something new. But that's usually how fan votes go, now that I kind of think about it. Saying that, I voted for Ghoul Trooper, but last I saw, the Black Knight was winning. And they haven't posted the results of that yet as I'm recording this, but they did say it would be today, Friday. <laughs> Beyond that, my big takeaway is they're actually talking about something Fortnite. I don't know if it's a licensing thing or an epic thing or something Hasbro internal, but they haven't said much about this line in a while. I finally ran across Wave 2 at a local Walmart, but otherwise you would think this is going the way of Overwatch. I always talked about how exciting that was with Jazzwares, that they never talked about it. It was frustrating, but it was also kind of cool. It made it very nostalgic how they would just pop up at the store or somewhere online and you'd grab it and you would have it and you would enjoy it. For some reason with Hasbro, maybe because of that Overwatch line, there's that fear that they're gonna decide, well, this isn't worth it. Guess we'll know when we know, <laughs> whenever that happens. And that's it for this week. Well, I, I almost feel like I'm legally obligated to say, but probably not. If I missed anything, we'll swing them back around next week. If you wanna see any of these pictures up close without me all, singing some random song as I'm dancing. It's one of those days, I guess. I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. But if you can't wait that long, links are in the description. As I've mentioned in several videos now, next week is Star Wars Celebration. And as soon as I finish up here, I gotta start packing because this weekend is travel time to get to Anaheim so I can just bask in all the Star Wars goodness. So unless I can carve out some hotel time, at in the evenings or at night or something there's probably not going to be a weekly next week if there is it's a return to robo in a hotel room going over toy news with you yeah give me that news robo i am going to try to get some con coverage because hasbro's going to be there hopefully they show some new star wars stuff it's just going to be very seat of my pants and i'm going to be honest i'm nervous not because of travel i hopped on a plane late last year and then I did do Denver Comic Con. The past two years has been very structured, very scheduled. At the same time though, it's made it very predictable. And in that aspect, I think I'm ready for a little footloose and fancy free. And that makes me excited. That kind of overrides the nervousness. Or maybe they're about right here and they're fighting. Hey, uh, 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 and you should be, oh, hey, what's going on? Either way, if you're gonna be at Celebration, I'm gonna be hanging at the Dorkside Toys booth. So. If you swing by there, if you see me, say howdy, because that's what I'll be doing, talking to everybody, because that's what I've missed. If you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. Veebs just hit me up with a text saying that NECA 
is going to announce their Comic-Con exclusives next week. So that's another thing to look forward to. Maybe I will be in the hotel room, laying on the bed, talking toys. You know, like most middle-aged adults do. Or if not, it's going to be a hell of a weekly the next week. I don't know why I'm so nervous. Maybe it's the excitement making me nervous. Maybe I'm too excited and that's triggering nervousness. Can I say excitement and nervous anymore without wondering what the hell the word excitement and nervous means? This is what I do when I'm excitedly nervous. I, I keep talking and I can't shut the hell up. I just keep on going. We're gonna go to see some toys and then I'm gonna come around and see more toys and then we'll talk about toys. And then when I'm not recording, I'll keep thinking about toys while playing with toys. How's that?